I really have no intention of wasting my time on punk children, because all they want is attention. But I think this once, there is an important lesson to learn from this ordeal. In the past, various propagandists have cited the similarities in cloud patterns seen in the Apollo telecasts and weather satellite photos taken around the same time. They claim this is proof that the Apollo missions were real. This claim ignores the fact that scientists can use satellite photos of the globe, taken over time periods of days or weeks, and then use these photos to calculate the positions of clouds as they would appear over the next few days. Additionally, as shown by photos taken by GOES, some cloud patterns are common and do not change significantly over the decades. Hell, even the notorious S-Vector pointed that out. A few days ago, I was informed that a former friend, Vincent McConnell, uploaded a video in which he claimed to have contacted a couple meteorologists along these lines. Now, the weather patterns we see in the Apollo 11 telecast perfectly match up weather satellite data from the exact same time. When confronted with this evidence, Jarrah White pointed out that it's very possible weather men can predict cloud patterns. Now, of course, everyone was clear to him that you cannot predict weather patterns on a global scale like that, especially three days in advance. Uh, Jarrah White stuck to that theory, though, because it's the only excuse holding together the moon hoax theory. Um, now, in particular, weather patterns uh, as seen from 100,000 miles away, or 138,000 miles away, the velocities and altitudes are very dynamic, so that's not important. Um, as seen from that distance, would have been impossible to fake. That's what we said. Jerry White said, no, you can fake them. Ask any weatherman. Well, so I went ahead and did just that. Uh, I have two specific experts here, and I'll I'll uh, name their credentials and everything. Matt DiPiero is a KSWO meteorologist with a Bachelor of Science in Atmospheric Sciences. I asked him, Hi Matt, I had a question and I would greatly appreciate it if you would take a moment to answer about weather pattern predictions. Hypothetically, if one could see the Earth from approximately 100,000 miles away, would it be possible, based on the current pa cloud patterns on the planet, uh, Oh, would it be possible to predict, based on the current cloud patterns on the planet, exact weather and cloud patterns to a precise prediction as they would appear roughly three days later? Is this sort of prediction of cloud patterns across the entire face of the globe possible, or is weather prediction much less exact? He answers, not necessarily, but it could help. Some satellite data is currently digested into forecast models, which does help in prediction. Plus, clouds are just a small part of the weather story. This type of thing would not really help with pre precipitation temperatures or winds. I cannot say that it would be possible with older or new technology. It is almost 100% impossible to be sure of any forecast even hours in advance. No way they could predict that. For sure, I am 100% certain on that. Okay. So here you have a real meteorologist with a BSc in atmospheric sciences telling Jared that he's wrong. Now it gets even better. Uh, this person is Elliot Jacks, the supervisory meteorologist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So he works for NOAA. That's, a, that's where you want to be if you're one of these people. I asked him, how are you? I was asking if any friends knew a meteorologist and a fellow manned space flight enthusiast, Beep, gave me this email address. Hopefully you aren't too busy, but I'll try to make my question clear and quick. Imagine you could see the Earth from about 100,000 miles away. Is it possible to accurately predict, with 100% certainty, the positions of cloud formations across the entire face of the planet as they would appear three days in, in the future, based only on the current weather patterns and their movements? Thanks in advance for any answer you might provide. He answers, hi, good question. The quick answer is that due to random perturbations in the atmosphere, and that the atmosphere is a very complex system, we are not able to perfectly simulate the evolution and movement of weather systems on a planetary scale. So since we can't perfectly model movement and evolution of weather systems, we can't perfectly predict the creation and evolution of clouds that are associated with these systems. That said, we have made great strides in modeling and use of new observations observing systems that are used in our models, so we could come up much closer now than we could have even a generation ago. So something to work towards. Hope that helps. Regards, Eli Jacks. That's great, because that means that even today, with, ev with technology that he says is far more evolved than it was even a generation ago, Apollo was 1969. Um, we can't do it today. We couldn't fake going to the moon today. If we can't do it now, 
How could we have faked it in 1969, you know, with this bullshit excuse that you've come up with? Um, I also wanted to point out that I got, I decided on doing this little project yesterday. And I, yesterday morning I went and uh, found, to see if I could email an e-meteorologist and debunk Jerry White. Uh, I got both of these emails and a return on the emails within 24 hours. Do you remember when I called you deliberately deceptive? Why is it that you haven't done this? Why, why is it that you haven't contacted any meteorologist and asked them, is it possible to predict weather patterns? Funny, because guess what? I contacted Elliot Jacks myself. Hello Elliot, my name is Gerald White. I'm doing my BSc in Astrophysics. It has come to my attention that you were recently contacted by a teenager called Vincent McConnell. He also contacted another meteorologist by the name of Matt DiPiro, who I have not yet been able to reach. McConnell and I had a falling out some months ago. Particularly in recent days, he has developed some kind of irrational personal vendetta against me and is hellbent on harassing me over YouTube and Facebook by calling me deliberately deceptive. A long time ago, he asked me how one could go about accurately simulating, several days in advance, the global cloud patterns as seen from 130,000 miles away from the Earth. I explained to him, based on what I had read on various weather websites, that it is possible to predict what these global cloud patterns would look like using satellite photos taken over several days or weeks. I also pointed out how some cloud patterns are common on Earth, and seldom change over several years, or even decades. I have seen such photos from GOES proving that. Anyways, earlier today I was informed that McConnell went public with his communications with you and DePiro. In a YouTube video, he read out his questions and your responses, parentheses, without actually showing said emails, close parentheses, and he has begun citing his replies as evidence that I am deliberately deceptive. However, the questions he asked seem to be a mischaracterization of what I told him. He asked you if it is possible to predict the future formations of clouds using only the current data alone. His messages do not even refer to cloud formation photos taken days or weeks prior to the current photos. I also question his interpretation of your and DePiro's answers. The exact links I refer to escape me at the moment, but can you please confirm the ability to predict global cloud patterns based on days or weeks worth of weather satellite photos of the full globe? Hello, thank you for your email. Based on your specific question, which is outside my area of expertise, I recommend you contact a satellite research expert to assist from here. Best regards, Elliot Jacks. This reply is quite different from the email that McConnell claims to have received. Uh, this person is Elliot Jacks, the supervisory meteorologist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So he works for NOAA, that's, a, that's where you want to be if you're one of these people. I asked him, how are you? I was asking if any friends knew a meteorologist and a fellow manned space flight enthusiast, Beep, gave me this email address. Hopefully you aren't too busy, but I'll try to make my question clear and quick. Imagine you could see the Earth from about 100,000 miles away. Is it possible to accurately predict with 100% certainty the positions of cloud formations across the entire face of the planet as they would appear three days in, in the future based only on the current weather patterns and their movements? Thanks in advance for any answer you might provide. He answers, Hi. Good question. The quick answer is that due to random perturbations in the atmosphere, and that the atmosphere is a very complex system, we are not able to perfectly simulate the evolution and movement of weather systems on a planetary scale. So since we can't perfectly model movement and evolution of weather systems, we can't perfectly predict the creation and evolution of clouds that are associated with these systems. That said, we have made great strides in modeling and use of new observations observing systems that are used in our models so we could come up much closer now than we could have even a generation ago so something to work towards hope that helps regards Eli Jacks so Elliot gives McConnell a detailed answer but tells me that it is outside his area of expertise I believe this discrepancy lies in the questions that we asked I specifically asked Elliot if it was possible to accurately predict cloud patterns based on satellite photos taken over time intervals McConnell, on the other hand, asked if it was possible to make these predictions simply by looking at the current weather patterns. Everyone knows that you need a lot more than just the current data to make predictions. This is essentially a straw man, an argument based on a misrepresentation of an opponent's position. Instead of asking Jax to verify what I told him, McConnell is asking Jax to verify a bastardization of what I said. Additionally, McConnell uses the terms weather patterns and cloud patterns as though they are the same thing. Now the weather patterns, cloud patterns, weather patterns, cloud patterns, weather patterns... They are not the same thing, and the distinction between the two terms is very important, as you will see in just a moment. Then there's his communications with Matt DiPiro. 
Matt DiPiero is a KSWO meteorologist with a Bachelor of Science in Atmospheric Sciences. I asked him, Hi Matt, I had a question and I would greatly appreciate it if you would take a moment to answer, about weather pattern predictions. Hypothetically, if one could see the Earth from approximately 100,000 miles away, would it be possible, based on the current pa cloud patterns on the planet, uh, oh, would it be possible to predict, based on the current cloud patterns on the planet, exact weather and cloud patterns to a precise prediction as they would appear roughly three days later? Is this sort of prediction of cloud patterns across the entire face of the globe possible, or is weather prediction much less exact? He answers, not necessarily, but it could help. Some satellite data is currently digested into forecast models, which does help in prediction. Plus, clouds are just a small part of the weather story. This type of thing would not really help with pre precipitation temperatures or winds. I cannot say that it would be possible with older or new technology. It is almost 100% impossible to be sure of any forecast even hours in advance. No way they could predict that. For sure, I am 100% certain on that. Once again, McConnell has asked the meteorologist to verify his straw man, not what I actually said. Additionally, the reply that Matt gave seems to be largely irrelevant to the topic at hand. He refers to satellite data not helping in regards to precipitation and temperatures and winds. Precipitation simply refers to things like rain and snow. It has nothing to do with what the clouds look like, nor does the temperatures. The inclusion of this irrelevant information seems to have stemmed from the wording that McConnell chose to use. Instead of saying, can you predict cloud patterns, McConnell instead asked if you could predict weather patterns. In meteorology, the term weather pattern refers to weather conditions that repeat several days in a row. It has nothing to do with cloud patterns or cloud shapes or whatever. In fact, weather patterns are primarily determined using high velocity wind currents, or jet streams as they are called. Additionally, McConnell later goes on to use the words, would it be possible to predict weather and cloud patterns? Again, these are two different things, only one of which is relevant. It seems that McConnell has a poor grasp of these definitions, and this has compelled Matt to become confused as to just what McConnell was asking him. Also worth noting is that McConnell ended his email by loosely using the terms cloud prediction and weather prediction. Cloud prediction is just that. Weather prediction is a more generalized term. It can mean anything from rainfall, temperatures, blizzards, you name it. This is a fallacy of ambiguity, an argument that relies on the ambiguity of the grammar rather than the definitions of the words. It has become increasingly obvious that McConnell had absolutely no idea what he was asking these meteorologists, and they in turn had no idea what they were really being asked. In any case, Matt said that satellite data fed into forecast models does help in the prediction of clouds. This is actually a confirmation of what I said, not a rebuttal to it. This is why I question McConnell's interpretation of the emails that he received. Now, I asked Elliot if he could put me in touch with a satellite expert. Whilst waiting for his reply, I found a few papers confirming what I said about cloud pattern predictions using satellite photographs. In this 1971 paper from MIT, for example, we find the following section. The simplest form of prediction is extrapolation of cloud motion by estimating cloud speed. This is done by preparing a movie sequence by photographing individual images that were taken at fixed time intervals by a geosynchronous satellite. The movie sequence is projected repeatedly onto a worksheet by means of an endless loop. The initial and final positions of selected regions of the cloud, plus scaling information, and the known time interval between pitches enable one to determine cloud velocity vectors. And McConnell wonders why I will not debate with him. As is the case with all punk children, they are not interested in intelligent discussion. They only want attention. And in their desire for attention, they presume to know what they are talking about when they don't. Clearly, you can't expect them to understand their definitions, you can't expect them to interpret the information properly, and above all else, you can't expect them to keep their perceived enemies in context. But I think there is a very important moral to learn from this ordeal, and that is, if you ask the wrong person the wrong question, you will get the wrong answer.